everything is balance, all right? Now, what these people are saying is right. You don't want to be an abuser. Hell no. Okay, you don't want to be an abuser. But there's a line right there, and when you step across that line, now you become a victim, all right? And so you don't want to be an, abu an abuser. Of course not. But there's never an excuse to be a victim, mm. all right? So it's balance. Everything in life that we get wrong, we get wrong because we're out of balance on one side or the other. I'm not much wired for being a victim. So what do you tell these youngsters coming up, 20, 21 years old that are, they lean a little left, they believe, you know, they're using the word masculinity. Right. And, and usually you hear the word toxic with it. Is there such a thing as toxic masculinity? What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I got a massive treat for you. Number one, because of this individual, we are going to smoke a cigar during the episode. Folks, if you don't know this dude, you need to go to YouTube, check him out. He goes by Dry Creek Wrangler School, Dwayne. What's up, Dwayne Knoll? How you doing? Dude, buddy, how you doing? I'm good, man. Now, I know you guys have seen him. If you've never seen him, check him out on Instagram. He, he, uh... You got some kick-ass videos. Well, thank you. Now, how did that all start, by the way? I uh, I just wanted to put out, I just started out putting out some videos about horsemanship, saddles and stuff uh, for young people who wanted to go into wrangling and cowboying. And I wanted to put a legacy out for my grandkids for one day to get on there and say, hey, that was my grandpa. Uh, or didn't plan on making money, didn't plan on it being big. We didn't have the actual physical school, nothing. It's just, you know, these, these young people wanting to go in this and they need some help. Are you like a kick-ass horse, horseman? Um, I do. All right. Um, that, that's, that's my thing. Um, and, uh, so we, you know, my wife and I, I said, you know, if we ever hit 2000 subscribers, we'll be in the big time. And, but it took off like we didn't plan, we didn't expect. Yeah, you're almost at a million. Yeah. And folks, he's not far from a million. I'm sure that's going to be a landmark. So I want the bomb squad to go freaking subscribe to his YouTube channel. It's called Dry Creek Wrangler. Yeah. That's the YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, yeah. And what is Dry Creek Wrangler School? Okay, so first off, Dry Creek, when I, I'm seventh generation Kentuckian. My granddad's farm in Kentucky, where I spent a lot of time, was on Dry Creek. Uh, and so it was, it's very real to me, very precious to me. Um, and, uh, and then wrangling is the job today. Mostly wrangling is, is, uh, people who go to a dude ranch and they want to take horseback rides. The wrangler is a person who catches the horses, saddles the horses, takes care of the horses, guides them out on the rides and, and uh, does all that's a wrangler. And so we started out, I kind of wanted to put some information out there and help young people who wanted to get into that life, who wanted to wrangle. Um, so Dry Creek from my granddad there in Kentucky, uh, and then Wrangler School. And that turned into, why so many subscribers? Because I think you went into like just your opinion on things. Well, you, you know, it, they told me if you're going to do this, you know, you, you need to put out content on a regular basis. Who's they? Uh, people that I had talked to who are in, who had channels and who knew knows this internet stuff. Right. Um, and so I, we were headed to Idaho last year. Uh, I was going on a pack trip with my sons, and we were stopping in Wyoming to visit the property that we have the school on now to see if we wanted to relocate. I didn't have a horse with me. Didn't have, but I'm like, I've been on the road for a few days. I need to put out some content. And so I just sit down and, and I just did a simple video. I think it was like, get off the interstate, you know, slow down, take some back roads. And it just blew up like unbelievably. And I had done a couple before, like, uh, how to deal with loneliness, well, yeah, because the, the videos I see, you're not talking about horsemanship, really. No. You're talking about it's thoughts. It started out horsemanship, um, but on the comments, you know, comment section on YouTube, I, I got so many young people that would come on and say, what do I do about this? You know, what about this? And I'm like, you know, I ought to kind of, 
encourage them a little bit in that. And so it, it kind of moved into that still during the summer when the school's going on, I still put out a lot of horse content, horse training content and stuff. But this side has kind of taken over to well, a degree. that side's what everybody's liking yeah you know, the horsemen obviously like the horsemanship right but right. like i wouldn't be looking at horsemanship even though i need it because i've never right I, I messed with horses when i was a kid because our neighbors had horses and you know i'd play them but i don't i wouldn't say i'm a horseman but you, you know the there's a there's a horseman out there that he's like top of the game all right i'm nowhere near in his field by the name of buck branham and you might have heard of him he had a documentary out but he you know he had a saying um horses and life it's all the same to me and it turns out that horsemanship will teach you about yourself and it'll teach you about life you're stepping outside of your knowledge zone you're stepping outside of your comfort zone you're having to control your temper you're having to control your pride and your arrogance and and you're having to control your impatience because you're trying to build communication with something that's like a totally different species and that weighs a thousand pounds and has a different instinct. And so you've got to learn yourself and you have to change yourself. And so you can learn a lot. There's a lot of life lessons to be learned from horsemanship. Do you think, uh, there's nice horses and mean horses? Like, do they have personalities like humans? They have personalities like humans, but like humans, a lot of that personality is um, formed and affected by their experiences. You know, there's you and I, I'm sure, you know, we both know mean people today that were not born mean. Yeah. You know, but life and experiences and just turned them mean. A lot of horses, you, you meet them and, and you say, that's a mean horse. Well, it probably is, but the horse is probably not born mean. But you something know, something made have, it mean, hmm? defensive. Something made it mean, defensive. It, well, people, people made it, and so it's defensive. That's exactly the word. But outside of that, you know, we have ten horses now. Uh, I have a horse um, that he's a he is the ultimate. If he were a human, he'd be a sigma male. I mean, he's just he's what's like, a sigma? Uh, he he's not a follower. And he's not a leader. He just wants to be by himself and do his own thing. So it's not an alpha. It's not a beta. It's a sigma. It's a sigma. He's just, he's just li he lives his own life. He does his own thing. And that's his personality. He's never in the middle of the herd, but he never fights. He never runs away. He just, I just want to be left alone. If I have to do something, I'll come do it. You know, and then I've got some horses that are just very social. And then I got some that are kind of dominant and, and you, you got to stand up to them. Now, when people come out there to learn, and by the way, folks, you, you want to learn how to ride horses better or even ride, are you for beginners or just straight uh, up? Most of the folks that come out are beginners, have never been on a horse. And where's this ranch at? Out of Sheridan, Wyoming. So you guys want to, and by the way, dude, like you, they say they're a week. You got yeah. quarters for them and everything? We live in a 18, we live in a stone ranch house, two story stone ranch house built in 1898. Everybody stays there. We provide the lodging. We provide three home cooked meals a day. All no the horses, shit. the tack. And That's everything. like an experience. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you might have to expand that after this podcast. We're already, 2024 is fully booked. We're oh, already no shit. fully booked. And, and I've you got think people the, asking you, about 25. Do you think the uh, YouTube channel's the reason? The, it was built on the YouTube channel. Ah. We wouldn't have done it, except I got so many people come on the channel and say, hey, man, if you'll start a school teaching this in person, I'll come. And after we got so many of them, I'm like, you know what? I think, I think we'll start a school. So we did. Well, you would think, especially for youth, you know, mm -hmm. kids starting to go awry, you know, it would be a damn good week in the country. It, it would. And, and it's, you know, the thing about ranch life, farm life, rural life, the livestock side of things is you're taking care of something other than yourself. And, you know, a lot of people are in trouble today internally because they're totally focused on themselves. Really? Um, and, uh, so if selfish, yeah, the, all they can see is their problem. What am I going to eat next? I hate my job. 
you know, my parents were this. My girlfriend is is just dumped me and left. And I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like who I am. And they're so self-focused on their problems. But sometimes if you just take that focus and shift it away from yourself and say, you know what? That animal is not going to be able to eat if I don't go feed it. That animal is frightened. You know, we get new horses in and they're nervous and they're frightened. It's like, and sometimes, sometimes they can see th- and the light comes on and they see themselves in that horse. And they're like, you know what? I'm, I'm terrified of what life is and what tomorrow is and, and from what came yesterday. And I understand how that horse is feeling. And, uh, you know, and so if we help them approach that horse, in a way that the horse is okay, I get it. Then it gives some clarity to themselves and their own life. Um, I have a, I have a little bit different approach than, um, so I've watched a lot of your stuff. All right. Mm-hmm. And I watched a lot of, you know, before, lot, before this call, I have actually when we, Isn't we that looked crazy at, how the internet freaking brings you together. When we got the call, you know, and is, is it Mandy, Mandy, yeah. you know, and she said, she gave me the name. I'm like, I, I don't know the name. So we're in the truck on the way to Vegas. We drove down here from Wyoming. And so my wife looked you up and I'm like, well, I've, I've seen that guy stuff before. I know who he is. Um, so a lot of these guys, what'd you, what'd you, what'd you think about my stuff? Um, I know you ain't a fan of a few people on the internet. What, right, what do you think right. of my shit? Um, I didn't, I didn't think anything that you, um, I didn't think any of your stuff was wrong. There wasn't anything I didn't agree with. I just have a, a little bit different approach for some of it. Yeah. Um, I, there's a, if you look in this, can we, can we call it a sphere? Okay. Of this, um, helping young men getting back in masculinity and stuff. All right. There's a, there's a message that comes across from a lot of guys. Um, you know, and I'm a big fan of Jocko and, uh, you know, a lot of that. So I'm not against any of that, but I think there's a, a piece of the message that doesn't come out as often and as clear. All right. Um, if you tell a guy, all right, what you need to do is you need to improve yourself. No, but we're not going to argue with that. I mean, that's, we're all on the same page there. Okay. You need to start working out. You need to start reading some good books. You know, you need to start growing and improving yourself. But if, if that is the end of the message, then, then we still missed it. All right. So my question for a young man like that, if he says, you know what, I've started improving myself. Uh, I am, I'm reading good books. I'm going to the gym. I'm, I'm quit chasing women. I quit doing all this. I'm like, that's all great. Now my question for you is why, what is your end result? What is your end goal in improving yourself? You're improving yourself for what? Well, cause, cause you tell me that's what I need to do to be rich or right. Well, cause a lot of these youngsters right now, they're trying to get rich. They want rich. Yeah. And rich isn't where it's at. All right. Um, well, it's not a bad place to be. No, it's not. I agree with you 100%. But my, my thing is, is like, if you're going to be a good man, it's not enough to be a good man for the sake of being a good man. You need to be a good man so you can better serve and better protect and be better to those that are around you. That's what you call a bomb right there. Is that what that is? That's a bomb. That means people need to listen yeah. up, listen twice. You don't need to improve yourself for your sake. I came to a point about three years ago um, where it's like, I, I couldn't stand me. I look in the mirror and I'm like, dude, I hate this guy. My wife didn't like me. My kids didn't like me. And I was just was not a likable guy. And I'm like, I need to change. And so I began the change, but I did not begin the change. I did not begin the change so that I could be a better person for myself. Yeah. I need to be a better husband. I need to be a better father. I need to be a better friend. I need to be a better man to help the young people out there 
And so my journey, and I'm still on the journey, and we're always on the journey till we die, but my journey was not, I need to be a better man so that I'm a better man. Makes sense. Now that you say it like that, there's a lot of people out there on the, they're doing it for themselves. Okay, okay. And that's, so, probably, that's probably why they, they don't stay consistent and they don't get the fulfillment I think they're looking for. A, a real man, Brad, a real man is born to serve period. And we can't lose that masculinity to protect and to serve and to help. But if we spend all of our time isolated in our gym and isolated in, in our booth at our laptop, trying to make money and isolated in, in, you know, our study reading, um, the art of war of Marcus Aurelius and, and reading all this stuff. And we're by ourselves all the time, improving ourselves. Then our, our improvements has an, we can get to the best we can get. And we want it with a net zero. Hmm. That's my approach. Well, you're better than, I wouldn't say a net zero. Cause like, at least you're, at least you're better. Well, in you're, case, in case you now encounter this, this revelation to where now, okay. Cause like if I, if I spent nine months in that and got really, really fit or really, really smart or really, really, I say valuable because the more you read, the more, you know, the better off you are to the community, but eventually it's to help other people hundred percent. But I, I wouldn't say net zero cause at least you're better. And now once you realize, dude, that was all senseless, if you're not going to help, sure. now you're in a better condition to help. Sure, absolutely. But I agree in, in yeah. essence, yes. Yeah. So so when all the content started like popping off, how did you say, hey, you know, because when I'm sitting here listening to you, dude, you could, you could, if you're booked out all 2024 and into 2025 now, and again, there's going to be people on the show going, dude, I'd love to go out there. I'd like to take my girls out there. Like, I'd like to take my kids out there. There's parents that say, I want to send my kids out there. Dude, you could quadruple in size. We could. Um, but for one thing, the class is five people. That's all a week, only five people. That's all. Now, is it we, with you? Hmm? Is it with you? Oh, it's me. Yeah, my wife. Uh, well, that's well, that's not scalable, Dwayne. What do you mean? <laughs> it's a good thing you don't you know care about money so much because if it's only five, bro, that you're stuck at that. Okay, you, no, you, you're right. So that's the point. That's a very important point, and I, I was hoping this would come up today. Okay. Uh, when I started this, we had got up, the channel had got to like 120,000 subscribers and it, now, now horsemen or more the advice. People? No, it was, it was horsemen mostly. Okay. That was back when we started. My best friend in the world is a computer guy. I mean, how in the world he and I are, he's my oldest best friend and he is, that's what he is. All right. And so he's like, you, uh, you're monetizing that, right? I don't know what that is, man. What are you talking about? He's like, you, you could, you could monetize this and start getting income. And I had no idea. So, and he, you know, we studied it out. And so we monetized the channel and the income started coming in from it. The, the point is we didn't start this as a business to make money. Um, we started this to help young people get a leg up into life. Now I've been told since we started it, Dwayne, you're, you're not charging half of what you should be charging for what you're providing. And, and I've had some, you know, advisors and counselors come through businessmen and stuff who come through the school and says, you, you really need to be charging more. And my wife have talked and I, I'm like, no, I'm not taking it. Cause I, I could do a dozen people a week and fill it up. We have a waiting list for next year that's pages long. If anybody can, but, but I can tell you that there's only X amount. Oh, there is only X amount, which means you're limiting the ability to help the uh, others that are in line, and you're limiting your own ability to. But I went to a I went to a week long horsemanship deal when I was a young man. From and if I gave his name out here, he's very well known. All right. Good horseman. Nothing, nothing there. All right. But when I got there, I spent a week and I spent even back then, this was in 
2000 and I don't know, 2003, 2002, I paid $1,600 for a week. But when I got there, there were 12 people and I, I completely fell through the cracks. I did not get the attention, the help with my horse that I needed. There were too many people. And I'm like, I paid all this money, money I couldn't afford. I mean, I racked up credit cards and I borrowed from this and borrowed from that because I wanted to improve my horsemanship. And I got out there and I spent a week there and it was a waste because there were so many people. The guy, like me, he was the instructor. He was the guy. You, you can't deal with 12 people. You can't give 12 people what they need to horsemanship over a week to make it worthwhile. And so I said, if, if I ever do this one day and people are going to pay this kind of money to come out, then they're going to get the attention and the service that they need. Okay. Can I give you some input? Sure. Now I'm much like a, a horseman for business mm -hmm. and I'm like Buck Buchanan or whoever you mentioned. Right. I'm a businessman. Right. Now, if I'm sitting here and you said, Brad, tell me, tell me, cause this is my problem. Right. Well, I would say number one doesn't have to be with you. Right. So the reason you, you fell through the cracks is because one person was trying to take on too much. Right. But it doesn't, why didn't they just get another person? So like you go find some badass horsemen to where you're not with Dwayne, that's 16,000 a week. You're with one of Dwayne's basically accredited horsemen. Right. That's 1600 a week. And by the way, we've got 12. You can go with Bill, Bob, Jim, you know, right. Sandy, whatever the, you know, old cow. And by the way, dude, you can make them authenticated meaning like th they don't pass your muster they don't get to be right. one of your horsemen right but you could literally help 10 times more people make 10 times more money simply by making you the one and by the way you think you know no one's going to pay 16 grand to be with me yes they will because you're the celebrity and and that's who they like and so they want to see you so you come right. out you welcome all the people okay uh everybody's grouped into five why because dude you can't have bigger than that understood but you don't have to be just you right do right. you um to a, to a degree and this i don't want to say this because it, it could be taken and i and i don't mean it um but this whole thing is is pretty much has become person personality driven well, sure. All right. They want to be with they, you. They want. They want to be with Dwayne. Yeah, but that's that's how you drive up the price, right? Because uh, like I got guys that'll pay ten, fifteen thousand dollars to come fly with me somewhere, right? Why? Well, because it's me, and they want to hang out with me, right? So at the end of the day, they're not going to pay that kind of money to hang out with my guy Ben, right? It's me, and it has to be me, or they wouldn't pay that. Right. But there's a whole bunch of people, because you're not just saying, hey, come hang with me. You're saying, come hang with me, learn horse. Right. So so the people that really want to be with you, they'll step up and pay way more than you're charging. Right. And they should. It's your time. Right. And you get to be with Dwayne. But, but dude, if you told me, you know, you don't have the 16 grand, my boy over there, Butch, okay, been with me 22 years, better horseman than me. Yeah. You know, and you'll see me at the dinners and you'll see me around a campfire, but you got, you go with Butch. Right. Hey, you want to spend an hour a week with me helping you become a business badass? Well, check out my group in the link below. Dude, I'm telling you, you can expand your business. Yeah. Doesn't have to be you is all I'm saying. Right, right. I they want you, you but dude, yeah. that's, that's the supply and demand. Right. So your prices would keep going up, keep going up. Like I, they're right now, people pay me $50,000 to go speak at their events. Yeah. And I would have never thought you're going to pay me 50 grand to talk on your stage for an hour. A buddy of mine who does it for a living gets 10. And he said, dude, how do you get 50? I said, well, how do you do it for 10? Right. He said, dude, 10 a lot of money. Number one, number two, like, you know, people don't pay 50. You're one of the very few lucky, you know, da, 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 da. I said, let me ask you a question. When they call you to speak and they say, how much is it? What do you say? He says, I say 10. And I said, I say 50. Yeah. There's the difference. There's the difference. Dude, yeah. I could 10 X your business <laughs> right now. And by the way, it's already booked up. So don't go back and charge them more. But 2025, yeah. raise your price 
10 times. Get three horsemen that are just as good as you, if that's even possible. I don't know how good you are, but I'm sure there's great horsemen out there in Wyoming looking for work. Right. And you bring them in. Three, just three. And start booking the levels. Right. Hey, you got you got uh, the, the Horseman Academy, which is led by Dwayne, because then you go kick it off. Everyone goes their way. You take your five. They take their five. And you can quadruple your business in 2025. And 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 the people that get you specifically, more money. Yeah. Why? Because it's you, bro. Yeah. And they will pay it, too. They will pay it. You yeah. watch. You mark my words. Because <laughs> it sounds like you don't really care. You're just you know having fun helping the kids and doing what you love. But there's also a, a, a business element in there, which a lot of people fail to understand, that it, it's always they think, you know, it has to be me. I had a guy one time call him and want me to coach him. I don't coach people. I have businesses. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. I said, when do you want to start? So all I said to him was, well, tell me what you do. He did yeah. this, he did that. And I said, well, explain how that works. He goes on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I set appointments with all these people. And then on Thursdays and Fridays, I close those deals and he's making seven fifty a year doing it. And I'm like, damn, I said, let me ask you a question. Why don't you just like hire people to set appointments for you so you can close every day? Right. And his, and his face looked like, I've really thought of that. He hired two virtual assistants for chump change, taught him how to set the appointments. And he, and he went from 750 to two point something million the very next year. And he thinks I changed his life. And all I said was, dude, it doesn't have to be you setting the appointment. Right, right. It doesn't have to be you teaching the horsemanship. It's your ranch. They're coming to see you. They're going to see you around. Oh, my God, there he is. But if they really want to be in your group of five, right. well, that's not 1600 a week. That's 16000 And I'll bet you anything, you will get people that book you just as quickly, just as fast, but you got a whole bunch of ways now to make more money and they're still getting help because the horsemen are certified by you. Right. Anyway, there's my contribution. Okay. To Dwayne in, 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 case, in case you want to, I always say help more people because that's what I do. Right. I don't care that you're going to make more money. That's a bonus. Right. But dude, you can only help five people at a time. Right. And now you're booked out. So everyone else is screwed. Coincidentally, it's how I closed Tony Robbins on our software. He was talking about, you know, how philanthropic he is. And he does. He, he really does want to help people. Right. And I said, let me ask you a question. How many people come to your events? He said, you know, 10, 20,000. I said, what about everybody else? What about the other 7 billion? You can't help. So think about it. And in two years from now, if you're doing that and you got, you know, 17, you know, yeah. horsemen coaches that are and, and high price for you, just make sure you say that was a trip to Vegas. All right. Oh, BL I taught will. me that. Um, but I, I'm not, I'm not, and this is probably so foreign to you, you, you won't even, you'll be like, Dwayne, you're out of your mind. I'm not a businessman. I'm not business minded and I don't have an interest in it. Now, my wife and I, um, we have, we're, we have, we're making more income now than we ever have. But if I told you what that was. Me, you, you just because it, in today's in this this world it's nothing, but for us it's like, and we're happy. That's the key. And, and I'm at peace. I I grew up in a in a family and in a culture, and in a circle that was extremely stressful and and combative. And I used to be an extremely tightly wound combative individual, and so one of the major changes I made in my life is to get rid of everything. And I mean, everything in my life that causes me stress, everything. And, and so, and when I see these type of business things, I'm like, that sounds extremely stressful. <laughs> it can be. And, uh, and it's just for me where I am personally with who I was and what I'm looking for in the life I'm wanting to live. It's just not, the, the money, if I have the money to do what I want to do, then I'm happy. And, and that's not hard to do because I don't want to do a whole lot. You know, right now on my bucket list, I want to go to Africa and do a safari for Cape Buffalo. All right. 
I could do that right now if I wanted to. No, um, no. Again, just the businessman in me. Yeah. You could also charge twenty five thousand dollars and bring five guys with you. Yeah. And they pay for the whole freaking trip, and you pocket a hundred grand because it doesn't cost that much. Literally, yeah. I just how I think That's because how you think. yeah. <laughs> well, again, I'm a horseman for business. For like business. I, all I can think about is like you know, well, how do we how do we scale that? Yeah, you know, how do we make more doing the same thing? Right. But anyway, I see what you mean. And dude, there's a lot of people that want to do just like that. Like yeah. in other words, they're not driven by money and they don't care. But yeah. to me, you know, you got to realize it. With a whole bunch of ridiculous amounts of money, mm -hmm. you can do a whole bunch of shit. Right, right. Now, you used to be a cop, right? I was in law enforcement for a couple of years in a remote bush, Alaska. Um, they gave you a badge and a gun? Yeah. Um, so, the program in Alaska, I was in remote Alaska native villages way out in the bush. Uh, and I was paid. I was officially employed by the native association that's the way it's they're set up in alaska and so i went through the alaska state trooper academy but for political reasons technically and legally i wasn't allowed to carry a gun mm. technically and legally how'd, how'd you enforce the law um i uh i counseled people into doing it right yeah and, and i carried a baton you know asp collapsible baton and pepper spray and and a taser and uh and and then you just you got to use your brain a lot more yeah you know i'm not saying i wasn't armed uh i'm saying technically and legally <laughs> openly i wasn't armed. right but yeah one of the worst jobs i've ever had in my life um In the videos that I've watched, you're talking a lot about masculinity. What do you think the role of a man should be or is? To protect and to serve the weaker. What about provide? Absolutely. See, Absolutely. That's, a, that's something I mean, I'm big in, too. It, you know, call I mean, me. even the scripture says a man that provides not for his family is worse than an infidel. Does it? Yeah. Oh, damn. I didn't know that. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, that's freaking. That's good to know. Yeah. See, I knew I was right because I yeah. I get the haters popping up, going, "Dude, you're a simp," and blah 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 blah. And I'm like, "Dude, listen. Well, what if what what if your wife wants to work, dude? If she wants to work, great. Well, then can she pay half the bills? Again, dude, I'm not telling anyone how to live their life. All I know is for me, my girl, she can work if she wants to, and her money's her money. She's still not paying any bills. She's still not buying dinner." I pay for everything. Right. I provide and protect for women and children. Women and children. Because, again, grown men, dude, you need to go out and provide and protect for your own. Right. I'm not here to provide and protect for you. But if you're weaker, if you're a child, or or if you're female, I probably would. My like, what do, you, what do you see when you think? Because I see videos a lot. I'm, I watch these videos where, like, someone's being attacked. A woman or a child or a. I've never really focused on the weak people, weak men, but right. let's call a woman. Woman's getting attacked right in front of you and you look the other way. What does that make you? You better not look the other way. What does that make you? It makes you a worm. Makes you a, fr and, and dude, you're going to get your ass kicked. So what? Yeah. You got to do something. You, you have to. How come everybody doesn't know this? Why do you think the, 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 the world's changing where they'll look the other way? They're not getting, that's none of my business. I, I put a People could get killed. Don't get involved. That's a domestic dispute. And by the way, you talk to a cop, they don't like domestic disputes because, dude, they go to protect. And guess what? The woman's the one that freaking kills them. I know. I was the only law enforcement officer. Uh, in, I was in a total of three different native villages. At one point, I was 150 miles from the state troopers. I was the only law enforcement officer in that village. 250 people and i answered domestic violence involving alcohol and firearms by myself no partner no backup no dispatch no radio i had a buddy uh he was a he was in a different village and this guy he was he was a big viking looking guy i mean just you look at him you're like that dude was born to be a cop uh, and he, he was telling me he had a call in his village, a domestic violence dude was just beating a hound out of his woman, you know? So he goes in there, slam dunks this guy 
And so he's got him on the floor and he's cuffing him behind his back. And she grabs a butcher knife from the kitchen table and comes right across the cop's back and uh, just lays his ballistic vest, just lay, you know, they're not made for knives. And of course, in just split second, he's, you know, he's got ham hands and he just turns around and just backhands her and knocks her in a corner across the room and knocks her out, cuffs this guy, goes and cuffs her. But yeah, he was protecting her and she, she took him with a knife. All right. Let me ask you this question. Let's say there's a female, good size female, and she, you know, doubles up her fist like a man and starts drilling you in the face like a man. And, you know, she's beating your ass. Can you hit her? I can. <laughs> I've never, I've never been there. Don't want to. Would you hit her? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so would I, I, mean, I, take- I just had a video where I said, listen, I, you should never hit a woman, no matter what, don't hit them unless they're, they're hitting you like a man. And I ain't talking about one slapped you. I ain't talking about one punched you. No, they're beating your ass yeah. like a man. they they know how to fight for some reason. So if she pulls a gun on you, would you not shoot her because she's a woman? Oh, I'd shoot her and um, I'd, and I'd punch her no, and everybody go. went freaking ballistic, well, but I'm some sort of woman beater. And I'm like, dude, listen to the context. Cause I, I'm, I'm the farthest thing from it. I would protect a girl right. even if I was going to get my ass kicked. But if a girl, I don't care that she's a girl is, you know, punching you like you're in a fist fight with a full grown man and she's knocking teeth out and, and bloody and right. lips. I'm going to punch her. Everything, everything is balance. All right. Now, what these people are saying is right. You don't want to be an abuser. Hell no. Okay. You don't want to be an abuser. But there's a line right there. And when you step across that line, now you become a victim. All right. And so you don't want to be an an abuser. Of course not. But there's never an excuse to be a victim. Mm. All right. Um, Or listen to that one again. so So it's balance. Everything in life that we get wrong. We get wrong because we're out of balance on one side or the other. And I, I'm not I'm not much wired for being a victim. So what do you tell these youngsters coming up, 20, 21 years old, that are they lean a little left, they believe, you know, they watch internet all day and they're just not real like traditionally masculine or I, I say just traditional men because traditional right. men, I'd never really used the word masculine before. It was just traditional, right? You know, traditionally, you know, this is what it was, but right. now they're using the word masculinity. Right. And, and usually you hear the word toxic with it. Is there such a thing as toxic masculinity? No, I think there's toxic humanity. Mm. Masculinity has nothing to do with it. There's toxic if we do that, then there's just as toxic femininity, but you never hear that word used. Hmm. It's toxic humans, you know, whether they're masculine or feminine or confused somewhere in the middle, it doesn't matter. They're toxic. Uh, but being masculine does not make you toxic. There's no toxic, in my opinion, no toxic masculinity. Um, and uh, I, But there's just toxic people who are just putrid on the inside and so, and they use their um, masculinity or their femininity as a weapon to bring that out and to justify that. Um, but they're just um, they're just rotten on the inside, regardless of what gender they are. So, no, I, I don't think there's toxic masculinity. What do you think of the public school system? I homes we homeschooled all our kids. For, from the beginning? From the beginning to graduation. I would Be, not. Because of that? Because of, no. Because sometimes, you know, especially out in the middle of Kentucky where, you know, shit, dude, they, they have to drive 19 miles to get to the damn school. Is that how Kentucky is, by the way? When I hear Kentucky, I think of freaking, yeehaw, how you doing I there? spent, I, I went to public school, for, and I spent in Kentucky hours on school bus of a morning you know, going through the hills and, and around, you know, picking everybody up a couple hours on the school bus, go to school for eight hours, you know, and get home at five or six o'clock in the evening. Cause there's another two hours on the school bus, you know, to get back home. Yeah. Um, but we didn't, I'm, I'm a Christian and I mean, I believe the Bible man of faith and I wasn't going to have my kids taught evolution. You know, I don't believe in it. 
um, and uh, and taught all this stuff and changing. Amer- I'm a student of history. You know, the public school systems are changing American history. Um, and and there was just so much. I'm like, you know, I don't want my kids in that. And now today, definitely with all this this gender swapping and everything, I I would not I would not put a school in a child in public school system. Do you think it should be against the law for the school system to even talk about gender? I think the public school system should be there to teach reading, writing, arithmetic, science, auto mechanics, shop, finances. They should be there to teach people and the religious, societal, cultural beliefs should be up to the parents. It should have nothing to do with the school system. Period. Period. I agree. And yeah. and to technically, unless I wasn't aware back then, which I probably wasn't, that's how it was when I went to school. That's how it was when I went to school. Yeah, they didn't they yeah. didn't talk about genders and and, no. and when they say you know do you know that you could be, again I mean listen I'm one of the most laid back fair people on the planet I don't care if you're gay I don't care if you're a transgender I really don't I mean if someone walked in here and they were transgender I wouldn't think oh my god get away from me. I don't care. Good for you. But you don't present those opinions and options to children. Let them figure that out on their own. Why would you present it to them? You you take a child, you take, and I raised seven kids. All right. So you take a six-year-old or a four-year-old and say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut. All right. Two days later, I want to be a cowboy. You know, next week, they, they want to be the president of the United States. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they want to be. They don't know life yet. They don't know the world yet. They don't know anything. And now you're asking them something that's basic. What gender do you want to be? I mean, it, it's just there's, as an adult, okay, as an adult, if somebody says, you know what, being a man's too hard. I, th- <laughs> I think I want to be a woman. Well, that's, that's your business, cat. You know, it, it's none of my business. I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. Do what you want to do, you know. But leave the kids alone. Leave the kids alone. That's why I pulled mine out of school. Yeah. And I did it recently because, you know, there's a lot of people that homeschool their kids because that's more convenient. But it's not about, well, I don't want them learning this stuff. It's just, hey, that's more convenient. Well, they're lucky because, dude, these schools, and I had no idea, they are literally trying to make sure that these kids understand these things. There is books that I saw in our private school books that had for kids had stories about gay sex. Like if you read the book, you'd be like, that's almost fricking porn, but it was in the school and they would fricking let the kids read it. Like, dude, that is to me an agenda behind that. If you made a movie, And put that children's book into a movie, it would have an R or an NC-17 rating, and the child would not be allowed to watch the movie. Yeah. But I we're did. putting it in a book in the school, and the kids are coming out of school, and they can't read, and they can't write, and they can't do math, you know. But they're introduced to all this. It's so backwards and so upside down. Yeah, so this is the part where I just don't understand. Who's in charge? Like, who who's allowing this? Like, you know, there has to be like school boards and superintendents and people saying, you know, yeah, that book's okay. And that book's good. I saw a video on YouTube once where the, uh, I guess it was the mayor or somebody that was telling the school board, I'm going to, I'm going to issue arrest warrants for you guys. If this doesn't change, like, where's those people? Because dude, you talk to normal, regular, everyday folks, they agree with us. You talk, I don't, how is the whole entire school behind it? The, well, the, the, the it's leadership. Easy, it's easy to fix. How do you fix it? <laughs> money. You say, Dwayne, how about money? That school, that school gets paid by the federal government for every child enrolled in that school. If all the real, good, normal people, the parents, said, forget this, and if they all pulled their kids out of that school and the school had empty halls, the school loses massive amounts of money immediately and money's everything 
And so the school says, oh, I need you guys to come back. And parents are like, we're not putting our kids back in that school as long as those books are in the library. That teacher's there teaching this. Well, if there is no students in the school, it won't be long. There'll be no school. And so you say, where's the money? The money is in the student. They get the money from the federal government. Well, if we take that child out of school, they don't get that much money. And it's a lot of money. But you can't get all the parents to do it. You can't. And so if 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 parents don't know enough, and, and I'm probably going to offend some folks here, if parents don't know enough or don't care enough to say, I'm pulling my child out of that septic system, then, Brad, there's nothing we can do for them. It's their child. And we can sit back and wring our hands about what's happening to their child, but it's their child. And if they won't step up and make the hard decisions, then it just is what it is. Society seems to be a little bit more, let's use the word fragile, right? We don't want to offend this person and we don't want to offend that person. How come no one's worried about offending normal people? Like if you, like if I say, and you'll get suppressed on internet for these oh, things, but yeah. if you say anything about, you know, well, you know, I'll, I'll use gay as an example. Right. Matter of fact, I was, I was booted off alive one time because I said, Hey, have you seen the clown that hides from gay people? Have you ever seen it? No. You haven't? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I walked into that one. Poor dumb pa kettle doesn't come down from the hills. Hey, that's all I said is, yeah. Hey, have you seen the clown that hides from gay people? And the guy goes, no. I'm like, you haven't. And all of a sudden I got kicked off the live. And so I called him back on a cell phone because he was still on his live. Yeah. And I go, dude, I think they just kicked me off. Not because I said gay. And now because he, you could hear me through his phone, he got booted and suspended for seven days because I was saying the word gay. Now, again, maybe they don't want to offend anybody. Well, what if that offends other people? Like, how come there's only what made society so fragile, do you think? Never used to be this way. No, it didn't used to be this way. Um, we guys and gals, okay, the real people, the real people that run this, that build this country, that that uh, that run this country. And I don't mean run it from, but I mean the ones who drive the buses and drive the trucks and fix the cars and build the stuff and check out in the store. We, when, when social media came along, when the news came, this is just my opinion. I'm not an authority on this. When all that came along, we were busy working jobs. All right. We were raising our families. We were going to church. We were living our life like we had been. The other side jumped on and they grabbed the megaphone. They grab the, the new studios. They grab the schools. They become the professors. They become the teachers. And so, as I said, I think on the last video I just did, we're not the minority. We're just not the loud ones. And so we gave the microphone to the loud ones. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened. And they hammered it and hammered it and hammered it till we grew up a generation that that's what they've heard. So that must be right. You know, and, and I think the mouth one is what I think. How do you, how do you think you get those traditional values back? I don't think we do. Yeah. Light world's changing world. Name one his, name one nation in the history of the world that ever rode to the heights rode that circle over and crashed on the other end and came right back up again. None. None. No, history says we're done. A lot of people don't like to hear that. All right. Um, I, you and I, we're not going to change this country. We're not going to turn this country around. But what I try to do with my channel, with my podcast, with the guys who come out, I won't, I won't even try to change this nation. I'll try to change you. One young man. It's like, look, have you thought about this? Have you seen this? And if I can change his outlook and his view, that one, 
then then I did something, you know. But this this country, this country's not. We're not going back up to what we were. Mm. I don't care if Trump gets in or not. All right, we're not changed by who sits in the office. Um, we're not. We're, I agree. We're not going to turn it around. Are you a uh, Trumpster? I voted for Trump both times. I don't get into politics on the channel um, for for specific reason, but yes, I did. Do I like Trump as a person? No. Would I invite Trump over for coffee and a cigar? No. Uh, but do I think as it, the nation's chief executive, he's the best of all the options? Yeah, he's a businessman. And he does have guts. You can't take that away from him. Yeah. Uh, and he's been right about a lot of things that everybody screamed and said he's lying you know he's the russian collusion it's all been proven to be lies you know not his lies everybody that said he was doing this i mean he he's been right and this country this country was better off when he was president than we dang sure are now well that's a fact do you do you think he's going to win again or no no <clears throat> i don't think there'll be an election Really? No. What do you think is going to happen? I think they're going to keep pushing stuff until they start something big enough that they can declare martial. Uh, the war powers skip skip the election at least this time around. I don't think there'll be an election. Well, I think if that's the case, then there's going to be some sort of freaking uprising. And, because, and there dude, might there, be. There's, there's a lot of people that have woke up. Th there are. And a lot of them used to be the Democrats. Yeah. You know, I know Democrats that are like, dude, <clears throat> for the first time in our lives, we're voting Republican. Yeah. And I keep trying to tell people it's not Republican or Democrat. It's people like you got to look at the people because look. I could be a Republican and go fall for the stupidest shit and do the stupidest shit just yeah. because I'm a Republican. Right. And Democrat, too. You, they could do good things just because they're Democrat doesn't make them bad people. <clears throat> you got to look at the person. Right. And I think we need a business man or woman. We need someone that understands business because, dude, this country is a business. All the foreign affairs, that's a business. The reason we're going to Ukraine and all these other places and the shit that we do, it's business. If people don't get that, it blows my mind. It's business, man. It's money laundering. It's freaking lining pockets. It's freaking paybacks. It's backroom deals playing out in real life. And the regular people like us. We, we see the news. Oh, we're going to war. Well, what for? Well, this guy did this. Oh, that son of a bitch. When in reality, that's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to war because they got oil and we want it. Or they got this and we're doing that. What do you think the average, and I don't care, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, I don't care. The average blue collar working man, working woman out there in this country the bottom line foundation, what do you think they want from their government? I think one they, thing, the number one thing, what do you think they want from the government right now? I would say the truth. If, if you're asking me, because yeah. I, I put, you know, I put myself in the, in the regular person category. Right. I want the truth. I want the truth regardless of who it offends. I want the truth. Then I can make my own opinion. But, dude, I don't know what's the truth. And I, that's the biggest problem is you don't know what to believe. If everyone just said this is the truth and you could bet that that is the truth, then what it is is what it is. <clears throat> if a majority of people say, hey, we don't like that, and I do like it, yeah. and, and the majority says they don't, well, too bad for me. Right. And vice versa. At right. the end of the day, I need the truth. So that's yeah. what I would say. What do you think? I think they want the government to get their foot off our neck and leave us alone. I think we want the government to leave us alone. Well, you know, originally that's how it was designed. That's how it was designed. And People don't realize the first three federal rules and the only federal laws were no counterfeiting, no bank robbing, and no horse stealing. Now there's like thousands of federal laws. Yeah. It's not, I, I, I don't think that the truth is the answer. This is why. All right. Um, if the government was to stand up and tell the truth about the COVID pandemic, I say, well, okay, this is what it was and this is why we do it. That wouldn't change anything. The regulations are still there. We know the truth and the truth bites. All right. If they get up and tell the truth, the truth is we're, we're trying to 
take control of all your food source. We're trying to take control of your liberty. We're trying to take control of this. We're, that's the truth. Okay. Well, now I know the truth and it still doesn't help me. What I want you to do is I want you to go away and leave me alone. I want you to get your foot off my neck. I want you to quit with the regulations. If I want to drive a one ton dually diesel pickup truck without death, okay, I, I want to do it. And I want you to leave me alone because I'm not buying the climate change stuff. How many of these climate czars who have talked about rising oceans have oceanfront property? A lot of them. How many of them fly around in private jets? All of them. Okay. So it's lies. It's all lies. Um, and I just, I want the government to get their foot off our neck and leave us alone. I, I can, I don't need you to educate my children. I don't need you to regulate my business. I don't need you to regulate my banking. I don't need you to regulate my milk. I don't need you to regulate my hamburger meat. I don't need you to regulate my wheat. I don't, I don't need it. Just leave me alone. We did fine. We did well. We did better when the government left us alone and let us handle it. I don't need you to regulate my finances and my money because you mess it up every time you do because you're getting your hand in there. Now, now do you think that's ever going to happen? No. Yeah. Me no. Either. No. Power yeah. corrupts. Absolute power absolutely corrupts. And now they have absolute power. And they're not going to turn it loose. You know, nope. so, but I don't, I'm not one of these guys. I'm not a hand wringer. I don't go around just frothing at the mouth and carrying on. It's like, it is what it is. It's the reality. It's been the reality of governments and mankind from the beginning of the world. And it's not going to change now because human nature is what human nature is. And until God comes back, says, all right, y'all, I've had enough. And he steps in and fixes it. It is what it is. Do you think that's going to happen one day? Oh yeah. Oh, I know Soon, it is. while we're alive. I have no way of knowing that. I think it's because not... they've been threatening that for thousands of years. hadn't happened yet. Yeah, um, and and that's been said that same thing. That's been you know been saying it for years. Even the Bible said they're going to say you've been saying this for years and it hadn't happened. But one day, but one day, and nobody knows, and nobody knows. What do you think? You, obviously, if you're a Christian, then you, then you follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Do you know his real name? Depending on the language? No, his name. Well, in, in Aramaic. What's his name? Jesus. So you like, don't yes, like you are? Like you're, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's his name. Yeah. That's not it. When they, they, again, dude, if you believe in God, well, then you believe in the devil. Yes or no? Oh, yeah. Okay. Of the course. devil will deceive the entire world. Does it not say that in the scripture? Absolutely. Okay. So, and this is always a big debate because everybody, you know, I've seen Demons cast out in the name of Jesus. Listen, if I met you and I said, what is your name? What would you tell me? My name's Dwayne. Because that's your name. Now, a thousand years from now, someone will be like, oh, you met old Dry Creek? And everyone started calling you Dry Creek. They know who you're talking about, but that's not your name. What was your name? Well, well it, uh, uh, Dwayne translates to Dry Creek. No, it doesn't. No, no it didn't. But it didn't, it didn't get translated. Here's what happened because I just researched it. What happened was they were trying to basically translate the Bible to, to Latin and Greek. Right. So they didn't have the, the right sounds and letters in the language and nobody would have understood Yahshua because right. that's what his name was. Yeah. It wasn't a J back then. Right. And so they said, we're going to call the transliteration. Right. We are going to basically change it so they understand what we're talking about, which right. may be innocent, right. but that's still changing his name. So let's say nobody would understand Dwayne, so I'm going to call you Doc. People will understand Doc is an old cowboy with traditional values, big old beard, smoke cigars. They'll get that, right? But they won't get Dwayne. They they just don't right. won't get it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say his name was Doc, and now thousands of years later, everybody's saying Doc, 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 Doc. When in reality, what was your name? Your name was Dwayne. So his name was Yahshua. It wasn't translated. It was changed. Now, the trippy part that I discovered was one of the Ten Commandments says, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Now, vain, people think like, God damn it. Well, God is a title. It's not a name. And vain doesn't mean that. Vain means to make meaningless or useless. 
That's the definition. And that's the real meaning of the word to make meaningless or useless. So I ask you, how much more useless can you make a name by not using it? Like, I'm just never going to say Dwayne again. How much more useless can I make your name if I never use it again? Well, so we're making it meaningless by not using it. Right. So you got all these people praising Jesus. We know who you mean, but that's not his name. Right. And he says, don't make my name meaningless. Right. Now, why would anybody want us to break a commandment? Why would anybody want to confuse us? Why would anybody want us to be deceived? Why would anybody do that? Well, the, the, the Satan would want us to do that. Right. And he's going to deceive the whole world. That's what the scripture tells us. So how come it's so hard to believe that maybe that's a deception? Well, it may be. Um, but I've been in I've been in nine different foreign countries and I've spent an extended period of time in some of them. All right. Now my first name is not Dwayne. All right. My first name is Stephen. I'm Stephen Dwayne Noel. Now, if I go to Mexico and I've spent time in Mexico. All right, that's Esteban. All right, it's translation. Stephen is Esteban in Spanish. Is it? Yes. Do you, so, do, so do, it, do you know that spelling, though? That's spelling and pronunciation. So, so for example, a word is, is first and foremost phonetics. Right. So whatever your name is was spoken. Your name was spoken. So if your name is Stephen... It literally is Stephen in every language because it's a sound. And in order to try to get you to make that sound, we create letters. So I could say, oh, it's Stephen. But your name is phonetic. It's verbal. It's Stephen. It's a sound. Right. So how do you replicate a sound? So when someone says, in Spanish, my name is Miguel. No, in Spanish, your name is Michael. It's just they don't know how to pronounce that and they wouldn't make sense. So they try to get you to say it and it's and it's pronounced different in in there but your name is still not different well your name is steven because your parents gave it to you and they decided and that's what it is and it always will be in chinese have you ever seen a guy with a chinese uh or a chinese guy working somewhere and his and his name tag says like bob and you and you and you know his name's not bob because he has an accent and he's chinese and and nobody can understand what his name is so someone goes at one point what's your name and he's like you know and you're like what's your name? Ink chunk chunk. Ink. Hi, what? We're going to call you Bob. Yeah. And he says, okay. And yeah. so now he goes, Bob, why? Cause no one can pronounce my name. No one can spell my name. Right. And it's easier just to say my name is Bob. That's, I believe what happened well, because, because your name is, is a sound. So if we take, if we take that, all right. So let, let's take talking about Jesus, Yeshua. All right. Or in Spanish, Jesus. Okay. So, so let's, let's take that and, and let's set it here as, okay, I, we accept that. All right. But is that more important than following his teaching and his truth? Mm -mm. It's not. Well, I mean, we'll find out, but I don't believe so. Yeah, okay. I believe following, like, in other words, I don't think that everyone calls him Jesus going to hell. Right, right. But I do believe that they're being deceived. And I do believe that they're technically going against some of what he wants because he says, don't make my name meaningless. And by the way, that wasn't even Jesus that said it. It was God, which is Yahweh, Yahweh. or Yahuwah. Yeah. And so, they're, and again, this is just my belief. Yeah. People say they're one and the same. They're the same. And I say, no, they're not. And and I can prove it with a right. simple question. Right. What did Jesus or Yahshua, what did Yahshua say when he was on the cross? He looked up and he said something. Well, he, he made seven quotes, but he. One of them, which was, why has thou forsaken me? Who's he talking to himself? Well, the father. Well, why is he, why is he got to ask that question if it's him? Do they have two different thought patterns? How, how does one person not know what the other person's doing if they're the one and the same? Because I, he wouldn't ask that question is my point. He wouldn't ask that question if he knew. Okay. He doesn't know because they're separate. They're separate. And by the way, who raised Yahshua? Who raised him from the dead himself? No, the father did. But so <coughs> the father we, did. You, you get in when you get what into if the, the father didn't. 
He'd still be in the ground. He wouldn't. But when you get into the Trinity, that really gets people. And I, and I believe in the Trinity. Okay. All right. So in, in, uh, in Genesis chapter two, God said, let us make man in our image. Right. Okay. Now, what is the image? What did he mean? I have two arms and two legs and a head, so we're going to make man look like that. Okay. I don't, I don't believe so because in the book of James, it talks about, uh, there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the son, the Holy spirit. And these three are one. They're one. Okay. Now I believe this is just what I believe. I believe that God is a Trinity. And when he made us in his image, he made us a Trinity. Okay. Now there's a huge difference. I have a body. I have a soul. All right. And I have a spirit. There are three separate. My spirit is not my soul. My soul is not my body. There are three separate, but together we make up one. But okay. they're separate. But they're separate. Okay. Yeah. But if my spirit were to leave, I'm dead. Okay. I can't separate them out. There are three different ones, but we're together like the egg, you know, the eggshell, the egg yolk and, and the yellow. All right. I believe God is one body. He has a body. Jesus Christ became God in the flesh. All right. He has a spirit. We have God, the Holy spirit, and he has a soul, God, the father. Now being God, what God is capable of doing, God is capable of separating the three different parts of his oneness, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. They're all one. Okay. But he's able for his spirit to be over there and his body over here and his soul here. And he's still one God with the three parts that make up the one God, so, the body, soul, and spirit. So if that's the case, then why did the body have to ask the soul what was happening? Well, like my body. So my soul is me inside. All right. You ever had your body say what is going on? Oh, yeah. I've never had it say well, what is going on. Well, but you have. So the first I've had the body do some shit. I didn't know what was going on. Okay. Because it, we're separate. The first time you're not your body. Correct. No, absolutely. So okay? you're separate. So the first time you stand in the shower and you've been watching these videos and you've been watching Huberman. All right. And these guys. And so the first time you tell your hand, reach out there and turn that, that water to freezing cold. All right. And you do. And your body's like, ah, oh, you know, that freezing shit, your body's like, what the heck is going on? Why did you do that? Your body is revolting. Your mind knows, your intelligence knows why you did that. It's good for the body. Your body is convulsing and shivering and saying, why in the world are you doing this? Well, figuratively, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, metaphorically. But, but, but it doesn't ask you, why are you doing this? No, but it doesn't know why you're doing it. It doesn't, it's not conscious, your right. body. Okay, but your your body reacts when you do something that um, beneficial, but contrary to what your body knows. Your body tries to escape. Your body tries to tries to this doesn't this is out of my comfort zone. Okay, and God in His wisdom knew that Jesus Christ He was all God, but He was also all man, and He had to succeed as all man. And so part of that success as man, Hebrews says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So Jesus had to succeed. His humanity part had to succeed in the area of faith in the Father. Okay? So he had to have faith. And so for him to have faith, God the Father had to put up a curtain at times and say, look, I'm not going to explain to you why I'm doing this. Because you're who, – who sinned? In the garden, man sinned. All right, and so man broke the law. Well, women, technically. Well, okay, <laughs> but as as men, we are responsible for our women. Amen. Okay, and so it fell on man. So man is the one that broke that law with God and caused that separation between God. Therefore, it was man that had to get it back. But man can't get it back. Because man's a sinner. So God had to come down and become man and live 33 and a half years and not sin and succeed as a man in order to bring man back to God the Father. 
So the Bible talks about how you've got you've got God the Father here, and He's righteous and holy. Okay, and you've got sinful man here, and they're separated. There's a great chasm between them. God cannot touch man because man's a sinner. Man cannot come to God because God's holy. So God became a man and lived without sin. So he succeeded as a man. So as a man and as God, he's the only in existence who has the power and the authority to reach out and take the hand of man because he is a man. Man messed up, so man had to make it right. So Jesus now is the one who can take the hand of man because he is a man, but he's a man who did not sin, so he can take the hand of God and reunite man and God back together. But he had to do that as a man, and he could not do that as a man if he had all of the knowledge and all of the power and everything of his godhood, then he could not pass the test of faith as well. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, that all makes sense, but... Think about it like this. You and your son, mm-hmm. pick a son, whichever one. And you say to me, hey, if, if, if you want to talk to me, you need to talk to him. And by the way, if he says anything, me and him, we are so aligned if it's basically me saying it. Right. So if you want to get to me, go to him. And anything he says is the same thing I would have said because basically we're one. Right. Right. It's the same concept, except for you're not actually one. You are separate, even though, no, 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 we are completely aligned. Anything he says, I'll back up. And not only that, I've raised this boy. Everything he thinks is exactly what I think. Everything he does would be exactly what I would do. So you're wasting your time coming to me because if you come to him, you're coming to me. So when you tell him something, you're telling me the same thing, basically. Think of it like that. Now, that makes sense. Why? Well, because technically you're separate, but I understand you're both aligned and I hear what you're saying. You're both aligned, but you're technically not the same because if someone took out a gun and shot your son, you're still alive. You're still there. And your son, by the way, might be confused as to why you decided something. Your, your son might go, well, well dad, why, why'd you do that? Which again, that's what Jesus said. He said, why are you forsaking me? Well, that's because they're separate technically. Yeah. It, I believe. And again, yeah. I may be wrong and right. I may die being wrong. Well, it, and, and nobody, if we understood, if we had a full, complete understanding of the technicality and the workings of the Trinity, we'd be as smart as God. And in the, in the old days, the, the council of churches, I mean, guys burnt each other to stake over this subject. And would I be burnt? You think by saying what I'm saying? Not by me, but I mean like by the, Oh, back then. Yeah. Yeah, but then so would I by the other side. I mean, and so what we, what you and I, you know, we come to the place where like, I don't fully understand it. I mean, I don't have the mind of God and you don't fully understand it. You don't have the mind of God, you know, but we, we work it out as best we can, but we, we have complete faith in what Jesus Christ did. And we have complete faith in the wisdom of God. That's where faith comes from. God, I don't understand how this works. I don't understand why this works, but I trust you. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Let's see, I'm going to misquote that. Um, Substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't fully understand it, but I know that Jesus is God, and I know that he was a man. I would say I would agree that I believe Jesus is of God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, capitalized. Jesus yep. called himself the Word. Yeah. In the beginning was the Word. And Word was With God. God and the Word was God. Now, uh, I got an explanation for that. Because everyone always says the same thing. Well, how about this? How do you explain that? And you're going to pull up translations. No, oh. no, no. That's, yeah. There's nothing translatable. That's not yeah. d- right. tr- pronunciation, translation. That's right. He said that. Yes, right. he did. Okay. Imagine if there is no time. No time. Okay. So in the beginning was God and was Jesus and was the Holy Spirit. Well, then how are you, how do you explain that? Well, there's no time because the beginning and the end, there is no time up there or, or there. So he was there in the beginning because there's no time up there. So it's all the same. 
which by the way, makes me go through uh, a thing. I thought one time, imagine if you died and everybody's sad that you died and I'm sure you're sad. You don't get to see them and you're going to go up there and you're going to wait and you'll see them when they get there. Right. But if there's no time, imagine when you die, everyone dies, even though hundreds and thousands of years pass between the two. But when you die, there's no time. So when you open your eyes and realize you're dead, so is everybody else. Well, Isn't that crazy to think though? Think about it. No yeah. time. That means if I die, everybody in my family that's already died. And you know, my dad died X amount of years ago to him. I'm with him right now. Right. We're all together. So you go from one place to the next and we're all together there because there is no time, which means, yes, it took 80 more years for you and your son to, to, to reunite. But in reality, there was no separation to begin with. Why? Because there's no time there. And if there's no time there, well, then it makes sense that he said in the beginning was us and it's always going to be us. What? So, so how do you explain that? There's no time. Well, what, what's the first three words in the Bible? In the beginning. In the beginning. All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's when he created time. Why didn't he say we created it? Because all of God did it together. If, if we look at the Trinity, remember Jesus, in, in my explanation of the Trinity, Jesus is the body, body, soul, and spirit. Jesus. So everything physically that God that he physically did was done by Jesus. So let's go back to John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, in the beginning. Okay, so let's look at it when creation happened. When creation happened was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now let's keep going. All things were made by him. Whom? The word. Without him was not anything made that was made. That's the continuation of those verses. So what that verse is saying is Jesus is God and the God of the Old Testament that created the heavens and the earth in heavens and the earth in the beginning when time began that was Jesus that made that that was Jesus was the third of God that did the physical creation in the beginning was the word Jesus Christ so he's saying look guys you need to understand that Jesus is God and he's always has been God Jesus is that the incarnation of humanity that we see today and know as Jesus, that's the God that stood on the portals of heaven back in the beginning and spoke into existence, time, space, matter, the heavens and the earth. Well, you got me thinking, so I'm going to go research that. However, nobody has yet been able to explain to me why we changed his name. Because we changed his name. We didn't, it's not a translation and it's not a, transliteration someone straight up changed it and my question is who had the authority to do that i, I don't man a man did well, it a man did it okay yeah. so who what man had the authority to change his name and by the way you go back to the original original scriptures in aramaic and freaking sanskrit and like old shit not right. the bible right and by the way who wrote the bible man wrote the bible is there been omissions in the bible yes people know this uh uh so the Bible's man written, but go back to where in man wrote the scriptures too, but supposedly inspired by God. So you go all the way back. He used to give us his name. Many, many times we had his name. He said his name. He told us his name. Matter of fact, his name was a gift to us and we were to call upon it. Right. And then somebody changed it. Right. So how do you call upon a name if you don't have it? You can't. Now, if you don't think that there's something there, because always people are always like, well, Brad, listen, that's, that's not what I believe. No, I, I think that's not what you believe because that's what you were taught. Right. Because, dude, someone had to teach you what you believe, and then they taught them, and they taught them, and they taught them. And my question is, isn't there a scripture that says, seek? He wants us to seek, and ye shall find. Listening to your pastor and saying, oh, okay, that's what happened? That's not seeking. That's not seeking. I agree with so that. So I'm going to go seek in the beginning because right. I haven't really, you know, I don't have an argument for that. I just have some theories. I have an argument about his name. I do not believe anyone that doesn't know his name's going to hell either. I don't believe that. Right. I believe, you know, just like if a little baby, you know, like an innocent baby that's never been taught, I don't think they're going to hell. But at the end of the day, I believe at some point, 
man changed his name. And I think that that was a trick. So we didn't know his name. That's what I believe. Right. And, and, and so when I found out his name was Yahshua, I just say Yahshua now. Why? Yeah. Because that's his name. And if you met him, he would not say, hello, my name is Jesus. He wouldn't say that. He would say, my name is Yahshua. And I don't, and just like if you met a Chinese guy, you know, he would say, my name is Ong Chang Chang Ming Wang or whatever right. his name was. Right. He wouldn't change it. Right. And if you met Yahshua face to face, you met him. Let's say you died, came back and you met him and you said, I met Jesus. He said, my name was Jesus. I doubt that you met him. Why? Because he wouldn't have said that. So he would have said Yahshua. So what is the name? What does the name actually mean? Uh, in uh, God is salvation. Okay. All right. There's your missing. Point. And by the way, in scripture, it says my child will come. And by the way, he said, Yahshua in the, in the, in the scripture, right, he right. didn't say his name was going to be Jesus, but you read the Bible. It says, he said, his name is Jesus. No, it didn't. No. Someone changed that a long time ago. And by the way, they got rid of the word Yahweh or Yahuwah and replaced it with God. God right. is a title. Right. And it is not his name. So, so he used to give us his name. Yeah. So what does his name mean? Well, Yahshua's name means God is salvation. Okay. So his name is God is salvation. That's what it means. Okay. His name is Yahshua. Well, God told, um, God told Abraham, or it was Moses at that point, what is your name? What shall I tell him your name was? Yeah, Moses. And he said, I am. That's my name. My name is I am. Now you'll say it like this. So if we if if Yahshua is God is salvation and we call upon the name, we call on his name, we call upon the fact that he is our salvation, not our good works, not a church, not a denomination, not this, not that. We call upon the fact that that is my salvation. That's calling upon his name. I'm going to go do some more seeking. Okay. What would you tell a bunch of youngsters listening to this to give them something to think about as far as becoming I'm a man? I'm glad as far as becoming a man or, or anything, what yeah. would you tell them? I got a lot of youngsters that follow me. Um, okay. So we have a guy. All right. The guy has a job. The guy's job is he's an ambulance driver. That's his job. He's been doing it for 20 years and he's good at it. He drives to save people's lives. All right. That's, that's what he's done. And don't know how many people he rushed to put them in the ambulance, drove them to the hospital, saved their life. Okay. One day, really bad day, a couple of bad, bad car wrecks and stuff. And he's kind of fried up. Like you get at the point he stops at the bar on the way home. And he has a couple drinks. All right. Just, just trying to relax, trying to chill. All right. He has a couple drinks. Um, and finally he goes out and he gets his own personal vehicle and he heads home and he goes to a stop sign and he hits a car with a mother and two little kids in it, kills him. All right. So he gets taken before the judge for drunk driving and he stands before the judge and uh, the judge says, what do you got to say for yourself? And he says, this is what I think. I think you should take my 20 years, all the good that I did with my driving. And I think you should put that into scale on this side. And I think you should take the one time, the one instance here where I broke the law in driving and you should weigh it out and you should just drop the whole thing and send me home. Would that be a just judge? In my opinion, according to law today, the law today, well, again, according to the law, no. Okay. But again, in my opinion, I would factor that. I would factor that. Why? Well, because it's true. And, you, but I wouldn't say you get away scot-free cause you gotta, you gotta be, there has to be a consequence. You of can't some factor kind. it. You cannot factor it. But if I'm a judge that's following the law, no. What is the judge judging? A judge, Whether he did it any or not. Judge. The judge is judging wrongdoing. Whether he did it or not. Okay. The judge does not judge your good deeds. Right. He's only judging the breaking of the law. Yes. So we get the idea that we're going to stand before God 
and God's going to judge our good deeds and our bad deeds. Not so, because that's not justice. Judgment is you broke this law. Well, this then, I, is well the, then I'm screwed. <laughs> no, you don't have to be screwed. That was what Jesus dying on the cross, he paid the penalty. Our good deeds have nothing to do with it. God the Father wants to make sure in the name of justice and righteousness, he wants to make sure that the bad has been paid for, the penalty has been paid for. That's what the whole Jesus dying for, his death paid for us running over that and up to the point or forever forever well then why do well then why do have people have to stop sinning people when if you become a child of god as the scripture says and christ the spirit of god that third part of that trinity comes and dwells with you you change and we're still going to sin because we're still in the flesh but our desires are going to change. And now you become a child of God. Now, if I have two sons, I mean, if I have a son and he's playing out in the yard with another daddy's kid and they get in trouble, all right, they mess up. I'm going to call my son in and I'm going to punish my son. I'm not going to punish that boy. He's not my son. When we become a child of God, God will he will discipline us to get us back while we're still alive here on earth. Um, we, we are directed by him because now we're his sons. Uh, scripture says if, if that, if, if you're not his child, then are you no longer? Son? He's, he talks to the people in, in a church. I think this was in, in Corinth. I may have that wrong. And he says, there's people in the church that are doing wrong on earth. And they're not suffering for it. And this is really bothering you guys. You, you guys need to not be bothered by that. Because I chastise, I spank, I punish on earth those who stay in sin willfully and deliberately after they become my child because they're my sons. If you see someone who lives the way they want through life and I'm not punishing them, they're bastards and not sons. They're not my kid. I'm not going to worry about it. They will deal with that in eternity. But here on earth... So we, we live like I'm actually his kid, and I don't want to bring shame to him. I don't want to defame his name any more than I want one of my, my sons to defame my name. So it changes how we live here on earth, and we're yeah. not alone, and, and we're somebody else's kid now. Um, and that's the difference. That's the difference in that. Mm. Um, and, then, and then in eternity, when I die, God, God is going to be, you trusted. I came down, sent my son to pay for your sin, and you didn't spit on it. You didn't say, forget it, I got this. I'll take care of this myself. You believed in what I said, and you believed in him, and you honored the sacrifice that my son made. So the wrongdoing that you would stand before the son, stand before, I'm sorry, stand before the judge and get judged for, all right, that penalty has been paid. He paid it. Therefore, come on in. Come on in. And so I don't earn it. I don't earn it by being good. I don't earn it by reading the Bible. I don't earn it, period. I simply believe in the one who did earn it. And he says, Daddy, I paid. So so all the Muslims and the Jewish and the Buddhist and the Kabbalahs and the freaking Kwanzas and all the various religions that are out there that do not believe in Jesus. Are they all done? That's what, that's what scripture says. God is salvation. The call upon the name of God is salvation. All right. The God, the Yahweh. And if you guys ever want to call upon Jesus's name, his, his name was Yahshua FYI. Okay. But God the Father, God's not that petty. If, if, I, I, okay. Listen, I'm not saying he no, is. I know. But if you came to I'm me and you said, if you came to me and you said, listen, and by the way, now that I know your name's Stephen, and you say, no, call me Dwayne. Well, then I'd call you Dwayne. But if you said, if you know my name, give it to the, to the you know, ranchman at the gate and he'll let you in. Right. And I drove up there, I'd say, uh, I'm here to see Stephen. And if he knew you. Yeah. He'd say, 
come on in. Right. If he didn't know you, he'd say, there's nobody here by name, by the name of Stephen and not let me in. Right. And but I'd say, well, yeah, but Dwayne, you know, Dwayne, and yeah. this guy really knows you and he knows your name's not Dwayne. He knows your name, Stephen. And you said, anyone that knows my name, let in. If they know my name, they're, they know me. If they don't know my name, they don't know me. Because how do you not know him if you don't know his name? So the only reason I keep preaching Yahshua is so people know his name. Because if you're ever asked, if there's ever a time, and it may be at the gate, and it may be, you know, I always wonder, why is there a gate in heaven? Like, doesn't God control it? Why does he need a gate? You know? And then why are people so upset that we want a gate in the United States? Like, <laughs> dude, he's got a gate in heaven for Pete's sake. But... I just want people to know his name and I don't want them to take my word for it. I want right. my words to inspire people to seek for themselves and, and think for themselves and go find out for themselves. So I'm not the one, you know, straight leading people straight. Cause if I'm sure. wrong, right, dude, you know, then I was taught wrong and I don't believe I'm going to be punished because I, I did what I was, what I thought I was supposed to do. Right. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, if, if, if everything's true. And I always say people, I would say, well, Brad, you say if like you don't believe, well, again, I mean, like I say if, because I might be wrong. Right. That, that's not unbelief to a degree. That's humility in knowing that I'm capable of mistakes. I don't and, know everything. And dude, I don't believe anybody yeah. does. Even no. the most zealous, no, this is the rules. And you know, the Bible means this, this is what it means. You don't know that. That's right. just your interpretation. Right. And by the way, I always wonder, where'd your interpretation come from? Who taught you that? Because, dude, how did this person, no one taught me that his name was Yahshua. I learned that by seeking. And I'm like, whoa, that makes sense. Right. And then when I read certain scriptures, when I take out the title that they put there and I put his name in there, then it makes much more sense. Right. So it's almost like his name even freaking clarifies scripture. Right. And it's like, whoa, like that's magical almost. Gives me the chills when I yeah. think that because there's some scriptures that mean they're, they're confusing unless you put his name in there. Then all of a sudden it's not confusing. Like my name is the Lord. That is my name. And I will share my glory with no one. Right. My name is the Lord. That's a title. That's not his name. But if he said, my name is Yahuwah or Yahweh or whatever, whoever's right. saying it, that is my name. Then it makes sense. Right. That makes sense. But it right. doesn't make sense when he says, my name is the Lord. We wrote that. We changed that. That used to say his name, by the way. Okay. If you go back, the, the scripture actually had his name. Right. Where now it doesn't. So again, put his name back. And by the way, coincidentally, he wants you to. He wants you to call upon it, sing to it, give praise to it. Why is it gone? Why, why did we get rid of his name? And again, we didn't. I believe he did. Right. And it's it, what's one of his tricks. And I believe the in Revelation it says the whole world will be deceived. And by the way, earth is Satan's domain. Yes. Okay, so we are all in his domain. Is it so hard to believe that he might trick our asses to stop using his name, his name, because he wants us to know it and use it, and he wants us to not know it and use it, so he tricks us to think it's something it's not? So now everybody that's saying a name that they think is him isn't really his name? That's possible. See what I mean? It's like That makes it's sense. It's possible, but, you, but at the same time, Scripture says he is not willing that any should perish that all should come to repentance. God didn't want anybody to perish. How'd this turn into Bible study? By I the don't way? know, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, and you know, I get people right, right to me. My, my name is D E W A Y N E. They get D W A Y N E D W A N E D E W A I N E W A Y N E. I, I know who they're referring to and I answer them all, but that's misspelling. Okay. But what, it, what if, what if you got a letter that said, Tom, I saw you on YouTube. I, I get Dwight and, but I know who they're talking to. And so I answer them, you know, and, and I, I think that's how he is as well. Yeah. So again, I don't yeah. think if you don't know the name, you're screwed. I just want you to know the name. Sure. Sure. And uh, it may save your freaking soul. I don't know. It, it might. could. I mean, I, I want you to know his name. But more importantly, I want you to know him. What if you walked up to the, what if you walked up to the gate and he said, what's up, buddy? Who are you here to see? What would you say? Jesus? I could say God because he is God. That's a title. Who, what's his, what's his name? I am is his name. I mean, he, he, I would look at you, I would look at you if I were the guard and names. I would say, do you know his name? 
I know a lot of his names. Would you start trying to get it right? But he has a lot of But names. if you weren't being let in, would you keep going until you got it right? Oh, I'm not worried about being let in. That's <laughs> settled here on earth before I ever get to the gate. <laughs> All right. What's the what's the one thing you would tell the youngsters listening so so maybe they can get a little chance in life and and, and straighten up or or drive or you know take a right instead of go left. Chill out. Just chill out. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have everything right. Just relax one step at a time, stay balanced and do the best you can. Mm. Good advice. Sage advice. Folks, if you guys want more advice, go to his YouTube channel. What is the actual channel title? It's uh, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Yeah, go go Google in YouTube or search in YouTube Dry, Re Dry Creek Wrangler School. What about Instagram? Where are you at there? Um, I think it's Dry Creek Dwayne. I'll tell I you right now. That. My wife takes care of so much when it comes to this internet stuff. I uh, Yeah, it's Dry Creek Dwayne, all lowercase, all one word. Dry Creek, Dwayne. Brother, I appreciate you coming in. And I uh, appreciate you giving the good words to the audience. Well, this has been one of the most fun and the most unusual podcast I've done. And I don't do a lot of them. I, I have only done a few. But this one, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Well, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> and folks, listen, pay attention. Go follow this man if you want horseman lesson. And by the way, what's the difference between a horseman and a cowboy? It's in the word. Cowboy uses a horse to work cattle. They're all about cows. A horseman focuses on his relationship with the horse. So and would you say you're a cowboy? No, I'm a horseman. You're a horseman. I'm a horse man, not a cowboy. <laughs> what about uh tv do you watch yellowstone oh, I, hate, I hate that show you do oh man it's a great show no, it's a terrible show because of reality a uh, part of it and and uh, mostly it's just sewer the cowboy stuff isn't real the very first episode my wife and i watched and i turned it off after that because it wasn't real yeah it was it was ludicrous <clears throat> where where um the character the younger brother, Casey. All right. He goes out and there's this wild stallion that's in the way with these utility workers. And so he goes out there and I'm supposed to catch that wild stallion and load him up in a trailer. And then when he backs up at the reservation to the round pen, opens up that wild stallion somehow or another magically has a, a, a leather show halter on. You know, and, and the whole thing from the beginning, I'm like, well, this is what it is. I've worked a lot of, I've worked ranches. All right. You're not going to have barrel racers living in the bunkhouse with the Cowboys. Ain't no ranch in the world going to do that. All right. And there ain't a real cowboy in the world going to let himself get branded by anybody. It's, it's too, it is a proud, it is a proud uh, field. And so the whole, the whole concept, and there's just a lot of bad people doing a lot of bad stuff to a lot of bad people. And it's just, no, I don't garbage. Know. What shows do you watch? Any? I don't even have a TV. Duck Dynasty? You don't have a TV? I don't have a TV. What about old Phil from Duck Dynasty? Uh, Phil, if I've heard him say a lot of good stuff. I know who he is. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but no, I don't have a TV. I don't, don't, hardly, I don't hardly watch any movies or anything. Well, how'd you watch Yellowstone? Uh, I was over at somebody's house and they had it on. I think it was at my son-in-law's house. If someone comes out to the, to the ranch, do you have TVs in their quarters? Nope. There ain't a TV in the place. Damn. If you want to watch TV, you can stay at home. You don't have to pay me and come all out to my place to sit there and watch a dang TV. What, what do they do? What do they watch after they go to bed? Like, you know, cause I like to go home, flip on the TV and well, fall asleep. We, we have, if, if they've got to get on their phone, you know, we have cell service and then get on our phone and pull up their Paramount plus or whatever they got to do. If you know, if that's what they're into, but you know, uh, what, by the time we get done with the riding and the saddling classes and all these classes and, and, uh, and then after supper, we go out if the weather allows and we sit around the fire, you know, we build a fire out there and, and the most time they sit around the fire and they're usually pretty tuckered by the time they're done with that, they're ready to go to bed. Is there any show on, uh, well, you don't watch TV. I was going to say, is there anyone that's more real? I always thought Yellowstone was like real cowboys. It ain't real. Huh. It, it's not real. Not, huh. not working cowboys. Damn. No. Well, it's for entertainment purposes. It's, it's Hollywood, man. 
Well, shit, there's the real deal, folks. Go follow him. Until next time, keep it real. Think in your head right now, I'm cool. Now, if you just think, I'm cool, you didn't say it out loud, just think it, I'm cool. Who, 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 whose voice did you just hear? Because again, you heard, you heard it in your head, right? Whose voice is that? Is that your voice? Whose voice is that? That's the voice of what I would consider. Sometimes, by the way, it's not you. It's not you. The real you, the real you is the, is the being. <laughs>